All right, so we're going to be working on combining like terms today. Now, our main goal is that we're going to be simplifying expressions, okay? So I'm going to talk about combining like terms, but then we're going to put it all together where we may need to distribute and then combine like terms in order to simplify the expression. So before we even talk about combining like terms, I want to talk about different parts of a variable expression. So first, let's write variable expression. And we talked about variable expressions yesterday. First of all, expression means that it doesn't have an equal sign, so we're not solving anything. So when you do the assignment, it's not going to say to solve, it's going to say to simplify. Because again, you cannot solve an expression. And variable, those are the letters, okay? So there's going to be at least one letter in these expressions. So I'm going to give an example of a variable expression. My example is going to be 5m minus 6 plus 3m plus 2. So again, this is an expression because there's no equal sign and there is at least one variable. Now the variable that's in here is the m and notice that it is it appears twice, okay? But it doesn't have any exponents or anything. All right, so the first vocab word that we're going to have today that might be newer to you or you might not know for sure what it means is the word terms. Okay? Terms. So I know that you just heard me say combining like terms, but what are terms? Okay? So if I were to ask you, in this variable expression that we have as an example, how many terms were in this expression? How many terms are in that expression? What would your guess be? Two terms. Which two terms do you see? All right, so you are saying that the M's would be terms, okay? Anyone else have any thoughts? You see three terms. Which three terms do you see? Three prop oh, the three operations, minus, plus, and plus. Okay. Josh? All right, Ethan, what do you think? The terms, how many? The six and the two, All right? What's different about the six and the two than the five and the three? Okay, so he's saying the five and the, and the three M are a term and the six and the two are a term. So how many terms total would there be? He's saying there's four terms. So we've had two terms, three terms, four terms now. Tommy? So you think there's six. The 5M would be the first one. And then what? All right, so that would be a term. Then the six is a term. So wouldn't that be seven then? If you're thinking of it that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. All right. All right. Well, we've had one right answer. The right answer is four terms. There are four terms in this in this uh, expression. Whoops, not four M. Four terms. Terms are separated by plus and minus signs. Separated by plus or minus signs. I also want to point out that those plus and minus signs, that the sign in front of a term goes with it. The sign in front of a term goes with it. So if there is a plus sign in front of the term, then it's a positive term. If there's a minus sign in front of the term, then it's a negative term. Okay? So the terms that we have here then, we have a 5m. Now, would this be positive or negative? Positive. There's nothing in front of it, right? So since there's nothing in front of it, it's like an imaginary positive sign. We have not just 6, but again, this sign in front of it goes with it. So this minus 6, is we're going to call it a negative 6. Okay. We have 3m, and the sign in front of 3m is this plus. So that's a positive 3m. 
And it's up to you completely whether you want to put a plus sign there or not. You don't have to. And then we have our two. And again, the sign in front of the two is also a plus sign. So that's going to be a positive two. So those are our four terms, 5m, a negative 6, 3m, and 2. Make sense? OK, we'll scoot up here. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is a word called a constant. A constant. Now, let's not think of just math right now, but if you heard the word constant in any of your other subject areas today, what do you think they might be talking about? What would that mean? It keeps on going. Okay, Damon? It what? It repeats. A constant repeats. Okay. It keeps on going on a repeats. Okay. Addison? It stays the same. So when I think of constant, I think something that stays the same. So like if I said, it is a constant 70 degrees outside, no matter what time of day it is. Is that ever going to happen? I wish. That would be pretty awesome if it was always 70 degrees outside, I think. That's what I like. Um, but constant means that it stays 70 degrees without changing. Okay? And I can see where the people that said it repeats like 70 degrees, 70 degrees, 70 degrees. I see what you mean by that. Okay. So now let's talk about just math. In these four terms, and these four terms, I'm going to go ahead and give you the hint that two of them are constants. Which ones of the four, which two do you think would be the constants and why? Tommy. Very good explanation. So he's saying that the constants are the negative six and the two because the other terms have a letter next to them called the variable. Very means change, right? Isn't very the opposite of constant? Yeah, so this term would vary. This term would vary. This term, negative 6 and 2, are not ever going to vary because they don't have a variable with them. So a constant is a number without a variable. Everyone okay with my shortcut way of writing without? A number without a variable. So again, we said the numbers without a variable are the negative 6 and the positive 2. Those are constants. They're never going to change. They're going to remain the same. All right, another word that we have is also starts with a C, and it is coefficients. 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 Now, I know that I had to kind of move up so you can't see all the terms anymore, but you have them in your notes right in front of you. So what does this oops, break out some language arts on you? When you have some letters at the beginning of the word that's called a what? Prefix, right? The prefix co means what? Assisting or next to, okay. Were you going to say something else? Oh, no? Is that a, I got, no, Daphne? Two things that are in the same position, okay. So like a co-worker, the person that you're working with. Oh, so sorry. All right, so, but and that's kind of building off what Ethan said, right? Right next to each other. Well, we're, that's what co means, right? Okay, so co means together, okay? Well, I'm not even worried about that one yet. We're just talking about the prefix co, all right? That co means together, okay, right next to. So if we were thinking about our terms, and again, I know that you can't see mine. Maybe I should, like, scroll up a little bit so that we can see them. These terms right here, what are some things that are right next to, that are working together with something else? Ethan. Feltner, Feltner. He's, he's got this one, I think. Sorry. Okay, so the 6 is next to a negative sign. That's true. 
Good thought, because they are next to each other, but there's other things that are next to each other that are going to be our coefficients. Damon. All right, so, so the 5m, the 5 is next to the m, the 3 is next to the m, but we know that an m is not a coefficient, right? An m, the m is called the variable, so the 5 is a coefficient, the 3 is a coefficient. So again, the definition of coefficient is a number in front of a variable. So again, the definition for coefficient, the number in front of a variable. A coefficient is the number in front of a variable. So we said that was the five. So again, it's not five M. The coefficient is just the five and the three. The coefficients are five and three. All right, we only have one other thing to say in our vocab section, and that is actually talking about what are the like terms. Okay, so that's like the whole point of what we're doing today is combining like terms. So what do I mean by like terms? Any thoughts out there? Like terms. All right, all right, Ethan Biggs. All right, so the negative six and the two are like terms because they don't have a variable, they're constants, okay? Good, so the 5m and the 3m would be like terms because they both have a variable. And not just any variable, they both have the exact same variable, okay? They both have an m. You can't have an m and an m to the second power, that's not the same, just an m, okay? One can't be m, and one can't be y, just can't be letters, it has to be the exact same letter. All right, so terms with the same variable part, terms with the same variable. I'll just leave it at that. Now, constants don't have a variable, so yeah, they have the same variable, nothing. So our like terms, again, are your 5m and your 3m and your constants negative 6 and 2, okay? Okay, now that we know all these words, <laughs> we're going to actually start working with combining like terms. And I think it's really something that you probably did last year, and it shouldn't be that difficult. Um, but look at the time. It isn't it nice that you don't have to have homework on your own time today, right? All right, so I'm going to turn the page. We're going to talk about actually combining those like terms. So I'm going to put a expression up here. I have the expression 4n minus 7 minus n plus 9. Now, again, I'm not solving for n. That doesn't matter right now. I just want to simplify this, just like you simplify fractions. You're making it easier to work with. So please always choose a term that has the variable first. So my term 4n has an n. What other term should I be looking at right now? What other is my like term, like 4n? What's a like term to 4n? Does a 9 have an n? All right, so is it an n or is it a negative n? Is it an n or a negative n? Because the sign in front of it goes with it, right? So using the boxes like I'm using, it's helpful, okay? It kind of makes you remember that the sign in front of it goes with it, and it's a visual cue that you're going to combine those two things. Now, 4n minus n. There is, what's the coefficient in 4n? The coefficient is four. What's the coefficient in this? One. So there's no number here in front of the n, right? But if you put a zero right there, zero times n, well, it's gone. So there's a one right here. So that's really important to know that there is a one right here. So we really, when we combine these, we need to do four minus one, which is three, three n. All right. Now I'm going to look at my constants. And since I used boxes to circle my n terms, I'm going to use a circle 
since you have the same color, the circle to show my constants. So I'm going to combine negative 7 plus 9, which is 2. A positive 2, so I'm going to put a plus 2. And you were done. This is it. Final answer. Remember that you could not combine these. This is not 5n. You cannot combine these because one has an n and one does not. They are not like terms. All right, I'm going to give you one to try on your own, okay? Something very similar to this one. Negative 7c plus 3 plus c minus 10. So again, if you will combine like terms in this expression, please. All right, let's see how you did. So my first term has a c, negative 7c, and I see another term with a c. It's just plus c. I know what coefficient is in front of the c? A 1. Do not forget about it. So I'm going to combine negative 7 plus 1, and that's going to give me negative 6c. So again, negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. And then my other terms are my constants, 3 minus 10. 3 minus 10 is negative 7, and that is your final answer. Final answer, negative 6c minus 7. All right, now we're going to make this a little bit more difficult. Because in this next example, you are going to have to distribute first. So we're building on what we worked with yesterday and combining it with what we have learned today. So I think in this one, it's pretty easy to see that it, it looks different. This expression looks different than all the other expressions that we've talked about today because there are the parentheses there. So just like in order of operations, parentheses first, think about it the same thing in here parentheses first, but instead of doing w minus 4, we have to distribute first, okay? So when you distribute, you're really only paying attention to this right here. We're not going to do anything yet with the 9w plus 1, okay? So let's distribute the 2. When you distribute the 2, what do you end up with? 2w minus 8, okay? 2 times w is 2w, 2 times 4 is 8, and that minus sign goes down there. And then I'm just going to copy this other part down. So we distributed just like we did yesterday. And now we're going to combine like terms like we learned about today. So I bet some of you have already done that, right? 2w. 9w gives me how many w's? 11 w's. And then our constants, minus 8 plus 1, negative 7. And then that's it. That's your final answer. Remember, you don't combine those. If the variables are different, then you can't combine them. So you would have more than just two terms in your answer. And we're not going to have any of those today. And in fact, we're not going to have any of those kind of things until much later on in the year. Because our goal this quarter is to be able to solve equations. And in the equations that we're going to be solving right now, it's just one variable. So not going to be a big deal. Well, our goal is to be working with equations, okay? So we're going to be putting this expression then into an equation. Because basically an equation, if you look over there on that board in pre-algebra, you have an expression on one side of the left side of the equal sign, and you have another expression on the right side of the equal sign. So we would simplify both sides, and then we would solve it, okay? Um, how about you try one on your own, and then I'll stop for today. How about you try... Now, be careful about what you're distributing. I know I want you to do it on your own, but what are you distributing? Negative 8. You're not distributing 8. You're distributing negative 8. The sign in front of a number goes with it, remember. So go ahead and distribute negative 8, and then combine any like terms you have. I'm going to check on how your distributive property looks. So again... We didn't do anything with 3K, so I'm just bringing 3K down into my next step here. But I did distribute the negative 8, and negative 8 times K is just negative 8K, and negative 8 times 2 
is a negative 16. Now there may be some of you that have a plus sign right here, do you? It's okay. Plus a negative 16 is just, you know, a plus and a minus make a minus, right? Plus and a minus, and that's on this big thing right here, that a plus and a minus make a minus. So I'm just kind of taking out that step of not even having that plus sign there. All right? So 3K combines with this to give me how many Ks? 3 minus 8 is negative 5. 3 minus 8 is negative 5. Is there anything that I can combine this with? Nope. So it's just negative 16. And you're done. Any questions about that before we stop for the day? All right.